welcome to the Beyond the Reef podcast, where I talk to experts and researchers in the reef aquarium hobby, discussing a broad range of topics from biology to equipment and chemistry. We take a deep dive into our guests' methods, techniques, and top reef keeping tips. My name is Adam Sutherland, and I am the owner operator of Frag Garage Corals, based out of British Columbia, Canada. My guest for this episode is Ronaldo Riveron from Pirates Reef Corals. And besides having a great beard, he is uh, an SPS master. I would just say overall coral wizard. Uh, if you've checked out any of his stuff, his corals look very healthy and very colorful. And I had a lot of fun talking to him today because this is the first time we've spoken. So the conversation was quite fresh and on the fly and probably more of a two-sided interview as he asked me quite a few questions as well. If you want to check out Ray's Corals, you can go to piratesreefcorals.com. And there are also some video links to some content uh, featuring his systems, which I definitely suggest you check out. There's also a section on the site for his parameters and lighting if you want to get a little bit more info on how he runs his systems. If you want to support this podcast, the best thing you can do is subscribe and share it with other people in the reef and saltwater community. And without further ado, here is my discussion with Ray from Pirates Reef. All right. Ray, so uh, thanks for coming on the uh, the podcast here. Oh, no problem. So I wanted to ask you, is there any product or change you've made to your system, um, let's say in like a shorter term amount of time, where you can 100% attribute a uh, positive effect from? Well, I've always used a lot of things. Yeah. Like I like to feed a lot of things, but in small amounts. Yeah. You know, like a lot of different foods. So I use, um, currently I'm using the CVE from Australia. CVE. From Coral Essentials. Is it, a, is it a coral food or what is it exactly? It's like, um, it's one of the yellow liquids, you know, oh, okay. like red CAB. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I saw you make, make a post about it and you had a little bit of a disclaimer about um, overdosing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just posted it. Yeah, I've been using that for a few months because the thing is I used to use fuel. Yeah. Uh, years ago, in vitro fuel. Yeah. And it worked very well. I used to use that with AcroPower, but the thing is that when I started to do actual trace elements, like dosing, you know, specific trace elements or additives, I couldn't use the fuel because the fuel has trace elements mixed in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, it was kind of throwing it all off. It was overdosing this and not yeah. dosing enough of that. So yeah. I had to stop the fuel, but then the fuel also had carbs in it, which was the carbs and the vitamins, yeah. which is the yellow liquids. Yeah. And I didn't have any other way to dose it at the time, except for like red C, A, B, which I've never really liked because it doesn't tell you what's in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't, like it doesn't all tell you Like all Zeobit products don't tell you what it, what's in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick of that company. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I do like flatworm stop. Yeah. One, so I was going to say old. that's kind of one of my little little magic tricks is, uh, is yeah. the flatworm stop. I, I can say for sure I had a bit of a crash a couple of years ago um, and I, I threw all of my like best you know, higher end designer SPS all in another system. And I was, and I was able to save most of them, but a lot of them were super bleached. Um, and, uh, they, they didn't come back very fast and I was kind of getting frustrated with it. I mean, I feel like the system had gotten dialed in, but, uh, I started dosing that flatworm stop and like, it was like within like a week, I noticed them start to darken up again. Um, yeah, they start to encrust, right? Yeah, I mean, but they started actually populating their zooxanthellae again, too. Like, these were corals that were, like, yeah. just hanging on for life. And I've never were... been able to figure out what's in it. I've heard that it's, like, witch hazel. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, iodine. I've been actually vinegar. thinking about uh, writing, like, an open letter to uh, Coraline Zoo um, and just sort of saying, like, you know, you guys need to start saying what's in some of your products like it's it's time to be transparent because i mean yeah. if if we're going to learn uh, and keep like growing as hobbyists and and even just whatever contribution we make to uh, even science scientific research i feel like we're kind of doing that all the time whether they care about what we're doing or not i don't know but i mean the, the it kind of it's a lost opportunity to be able to learn you know if we don't know what we're putting in if they just say like a blend of trace elements it's like well i'm not going to put in trace elements on top of the trace elements i'm already adding if i don't know what's in them you know see i had i had an issue with that um with their coral booster yeah i don't yeah. blame it completely on the coral booster but i was using coral booster i was using um uh potassium nitrate 
And I forgot what else I was – something else I was doing that had a little bit of potassium as well. Yeah. And somehow, some way, my potassium jumped up to 577. Wow. And that's how I nuked that uh, full SPS tank that I usually oh, grow stuff in. Was it a fairly quick – I don't know quick, how that happened. Fairly quick yeah. uh, rise in, in potassium, you think, or – well, I mean, it must have been supposed to go that high. <laughs> faster than the corals can handle. I mean, I've heard of majorly elevated levels, but over a slow, slow amount of time. But uh, yeah, that's, no, that's... Yeah, this was quick. This was quick. And then yeah. the thing is, the corals don't die right away either. They die over, you know, months. Yeah. Yeah. And they start turning. It was weird. They turn like dark, like blackish, and then they would just die. Yeah. Yeah. I have one trick for figuring out if there's certain things in some of those, those, uh, those bottles so like if you were suspicious that it had potassium uh do like a salifert potassium test and then like like get the test to the point where it should start reacting and then mm -hmm. put like a drop of that product in and the if the color changes immediately because you're doing like way more than your tank would have right it's concentrated the water the color yeah. would change immediately right you probably do the same with iodine or or whatever well i had i had somebody icp it oh yeah did yeah that's him it yeah yeah yeah, I mean, we've ICP a few products. We've tried ICP a few products yeah. over here, but oh, cool. I mean, it's you know you don't know really how much is in it either way when you're dosing it. Mm -hmm. You just know what's actually in the product. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and like you say, I mean, a lot of uh, you know, there's uh, potassium uh, phosphate, right? So like a lot of phosphate products mm -hmm. will be adding a bit of potassium. I don't think it's a lot, but I think it's it's enough that it's gonna you know over time. I think everything adds up a lot. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I kind of shoot for that uh, 400 ish range and, you know, I've let it drift up into yeah, closer to 450 and I haven't noticed anything better necessarily or worse. It just kind of is what it is. So, um, but I can yeah, tell you I haven't noticed anything. for sure. Um, I ha So I have a, the, a local fish store that I keep a couple of frag tanks in. It's kind of my way of having a bit of a local presence here. Um, mm -hmm. I had a system that every time I put uh reef raft rainbow loom in that tank, I would come back a couple days later and it would be peeled. It would be totally gone. It's not a big deal. I mean, I have piles and piles of that coral. But yeah. uh, I uh, I finally did an ICP on that system because it just it doesn't get the attention that my home systems get. And the potassium was like 330 or something like that, 320. And so I brought it up slowly up to natural seawater levels, put Rainbow Loom in, and it's been just rocking ever since. So that's like a direct, you know, like correlation today. yeah correlation for sure so yeah it's nice to get that kind of like i mean i wouldn't call it hard data but i would say there was nothing else that was changed i mean the all the information we have is is off experimenting you know yeah there's nothing concrete on the internet no. to tell us what to do we have to learn everything ourselves yeah it's definitely a lot of trial and error how long have you been uh, in the hobby for um i want to say i started selling around 2014 yeah 15 probably like seven years yeah okay six seven years and i was in the hobby a little bit prior to that probably like two years yeah so well if you started if you're selling 2014 you're probably about 10 years in then overall as far as yeah yeah probably yeah close. Nice. i'm getting close to 10 at least yeah yeah well actually that brings me to uh this is a little section i want to i want to do it's it's called uh, past present and future <laughs> and uh <laughs> i kind of want to talk a little bit about like what reef keeping was like you know, back in the early days and then kind of what's going on right now and then kind of where we think the hobby is going to be in, you know, 10, 20 years, even five years, you know. So, mm -hmm. I mean, my experience is I started in uh, about 2001, I would say. And I remember seeing my first acro and it was, I can't remember, it was probably like a Formosa or like a pretty standard staghorn and it was green and I thought it was super cool, <laughs> but you know, yeah. at the time, like trying to find colorful acros was like, you might see like a purple Valida, uh, you know, but it was just nothing like it is now. And it's yeah, like a tricolor Valida or something. And then the other thing was like, there would be a lot of corals they would import, um, that would be like a, a brotenoids, I think is how you say it. That was a really cool acro, that stubby pink tip. Or robusta is very similar mm -hmm. species. Abros. Yeah, they bring those in, and they were like I remember just never being able to keep the color on them. They look awesome when they come in, but uh, I feel like the corals they're bringing in now are a little bit better selected for what does well in our systems, which is kind of nice. 
Um, but you know, their colors are better too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they 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 started to figure it out. Um, you know, I mean, one thing uh, I I went to Bali back in uh, in February this year, and uh, I went to a farm yes. there, really good farm, and uh, I even met like the owner that started it, and uh, he told me they hadn't collected broodstock in like seven or eight years, so basically. Every acro wow. that they're mare culturing is the same stuff over and over and over again because they have to actually apply for permits to collect. Like you'd think that they could easily just go grab new broodstock, but um, I don't think it's like it's very, it's very strict over there. I've heard, yeah. I've heard they'll sink your ships and everything. Yeah, yeah, I know it's pretty pretty competitive, and there's areas that are um, like you know their broodstock colonies will get stolen from other farmers, and like it's it's a coral pirate pirate zone over there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I've been kind of staying away from importing lately. I feel like I'm kind of at a point now where uh, you know I could probably sustain myself. Um, I guess this would get to the future part of it because you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting a little bit sidetracked here. But, um, you know, if at some point the exporting stops or slows down or becomes more restrictive overseas, like I feel like people like you and me that know how to grow corals from frags to colonies, uh, we're in a pretty good position to kind of continue on uh, running a business. Right. We're not just chop shops. Yeah. Well, I've never I've never done well with maricultures. Yeah. I tried them here and there back back in the day. Um, I used to buy like from unique corals, or you know, just random stores that might have a nice mariculture colony. Yeah, and they would do well for a little bit, and then they would one day just die for no reason. Yeah, like, there's there's a few color up and then die. Yeah, there's a few problems, and they do. They seem to color up really well in the first kind of couple months, and I found it especially with the tenuous. Um, I don't know if you've mm -hmm. noticed when some of them peel, but the base is green like the skeleton is green it gets yeah it has the green, green green boring algae yeah i don't know if it's the boring algae or, or it also could have something to do with the iron on the racks um but uh oh, like you know, to, the rocks they come in with yeah i'd like to get to the bottom of it um because I think it's, the algae. It's, it's pissing me off to be honest i mean yeah I, I brought i picked some pretty nice stuff when i was at the farm um in bali yeah. and uh all pretty much all the tenuous peeled within the first you didn't you month. didn't cut them up though I mean, the first thing I do is I, so when I land my shipments, I put them in a system that doesn't have other acros in it. So they quarantine in my LPS system. Uh, so I let yeah. them settle. I don't even dip them right away. Uh, and then I rebase all of them, dip them, and then I may start moving the occasional piece over to the SPS system. Uh, sort of oh. one at a time. But uh, what's your protocol, by the way? What are you, what's your QT? And um, I mean, I usually I don't, I don't bring them in, you know, like I said. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't brought anything in in a long time. All I do is I try to buy frags and grow them out. Yeah. So all my stuff is grown from frags. But um, usually what I do is my my original tank, which is uh, this display. <laughs> it's not really a display, but it's, you know, it's all frag racks now. That one is where I start stuff at. And then once I see, because that tank is actually hardier than my other system. Yeah. So, you know, I let them settle in there. Once I see they look good and they got PE and stuff, and then I'll cut a frag off of that, dip it, and then transfer that into the other system, and then I'll try to continue growing it there. Okay, so you have... You know, like and I always inspect them you yeah. know, very, very vigorously. If I see um, any tenuous white bugs, they'll get an interceptor dip yeah. for for an hour. They always get a revived dip for five minutes. Yeah. You know, yeah. plugs are always... You always throw away the plugs. I only keep yeah. the actual coral. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Stuff. Like revive is great for flatworms and certain things, but it doesn't really get the bugs mm -hmm. off. Um, no, I guess you should you should say the the uh, the pods off. Um, but yeah, interceptor. It kills some pods, but not all of them. Yeah, yeah. And I, I I've struggled with uh, the sort of gray type bugs over the last couple of years. Like they've come back, and I've had to interceptor again. And basically, like what I don't was know. It, if... Uh, they, I don't know where they're getting in originally, but I think that there's there's a strain of them that's going around the hobby that's just more resistant to dipping and to in interceptor. And I had to do like, a, I think. But do you have them on other corals other than tenuous or no? No, they're on all like they they would go on all acros. I mean, I'm cl completely clear now, but I did like a like a ten times dose to what uh, the red bug you know, the standard red bug doses, it's, it's a yeah. crazy, crazy high dose. But if, I mean, if you're treating stuff that's new on the way in and you can do a bath with them, like then you, you're doing concentrated too, right? So mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, I use I use the Dr. G's dip, which is it's basically interceptor. He makes it pure. He just oh. mixes the actual chemical with water. Okay. And, I mean, it's the same thing. Now, I've always used it because we had that issue with the white bugs with the tenuous. Yeah. I found out about that years ago, probably, I don't know, six, five, six years ago when I went to Rehapalooza, California. Yeah. And we bought some stuff. Me and my buddy um, came back and we had, you know, the tenuous start turning white. And I was like, man, why are the tenuous, you know, losing color? They were doing yeah. fine. And you start chasing things that, you know, is the lighting too high or your nutrients low? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nothing was fixing it. And then one day I just decided to pick it up and I see the dark side of the tenuous, you know, where it doesn't get light. And you can see the little white bugs walking around. Yeah. And that's when I found out about them. And to this day, people still don't believe me. Yeah. There's still people learning about them. Like this year, Rehapalooza, there was people that were that were telling me, oh, you were right. I just, you know, learned about white bugs. And I'm yeah. like, I've been saying it for years. You guys don't see them. And they mostly just go on tenuous, hey? Well, the ones that we have here, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen. Yeah. I may have seen the ones you're talking about years ago, too. But since I haven't brought in anything, yeah, it's hard to see a new pest, you know? Yeah, no, that's that's nice. It's nice to be just kind of locked down. And if you're just bringing in frags, it's like super easy to inspect. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I try to get frags from, you know, wherever I see it. Like this year, I brought a couple things from ARC. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just like trusted people. sources. Yeah. And I mean, if something's encrusted, like uh, do you do the thing where you do like a ring of glue around the base and kind of try to keep keep it or do you just chop it up above it i guess it kind of uh, usually by i break it off yeah 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 usually i throw away the encrustment or i'll yeah. leave i'll leave the encrustment in my other system yeah and i'll put the new the nice piece in the other tank if i have to you know but yeah. i don't it has to be something i really really wanted to keep the encrustment yeah for yeah if it's like okay that was like a couple months of encrusting on a 500 hundred dollar frag I'll, yeah. I'll keep it <laughs> it has to be something really nice if not usually i yeah. throw it away so this like, doctor home and I'll throw away the bottom yeah. So this Dr. G's dip you were talking about, so it, it probably has the uh, milbomycin oxime in it, mm -hmm. which is the, the ingredient for the red bug treatment. Yeah. Uh, he uses I wonder that, how, then, um, so is it a cocktail of a couple things? What's the... No, no, he just uses that, and I think it's vitamin C and RO water. That's it. Okay, interesting. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know the the strength of the mix, though. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's that's a that's a thing because it'd be nice if you could actually use it on a whole system if you were treating. Instead oh, you of, can. Because the interceptor is like really expensive and hard to get from the vet. Like the vet, not all vets will. Oh, this is this is more expensive than interceptor. Oh, is so. it? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe it's time to. It's actually cheap for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it hard to get up there? Um, I mean, you have to get it prescribed from a vet, um, and I guess it's like six 23 milligram tablets costs about 120 bucks uh, Canadian, so probably well, 80 here, bucks. I mean, it's easy to get. Most of the vets know about it, reefing, so yeah. you just tell them hey, my tank, and they're like, all right, here you go. Yeah, I know. I was talking to a vet about it recently, and well, this is a couple of years ago, but they were kind of like, with the whole ivermectin thing, they're like, a de it's like a dewormer. They were like... Are you kind of a weirdo? Like, what are you doing with this stuff? Yeah, you know, this? <laughs> so, but yeah, no, they 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 prescribed it to me, but yeah, but uh, no, it would be nice if there was a way to get it in uh, bigger quantity, and because I I do think yeah, when it comes to anything in that uh, you know crustacean world, it just wipes them mm -hmm. out, no problem. So and it's the only it's the only option I think we've found so far. I haven't been able to find anything else that works. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I'm sure there's a dip. There's probably a dip here and there that works, but I don't like to stray away from the revive. It works so well. Yeah. That I just have to leave it. Yeah, it's good stuff. I mean, I've been using potassium chloride uh, as well, and it's good yeah. because it's cheap. If I need to do a big batch of dipping, um, like I've I've got red planaria in my LPS system, and you know they're not like a parasite mm -hmm. or anything. They're just you know if I'm selling uh, frags, I'll I'll do a batch of dipping before I ship it. Have you tried a uh, flatworm exit or no? Uh, I mean, I, I, I have too many in the system to consider doing that. I think yeah, if I was going to treat, I would probably, uh, I would probably take the whole tank apart and try to get as many of them out and then dip all the racks on their own. All my racks mm -hmm. are the, uh, like fit in those Coleman stacker coolers. So I can like take each one out and, and dip it on its own. So, so okay. I'd probably do that. Um, but it's a bit of a big job, um, but, yeah, your tanks are kind of big. <laughs> yeah, one of these days. Yeah, that system's like nine by four feet by like sixteen tall, so it's a it's a nice size for sure. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but uh, actually, what do that you gets do, me to dose on your SPS tanks. Uh, what do I dose? Like, as far as anything like special or different, like or nutrient, just... like uh, you know, acro power amino, yeah. that type of stuff. Um, 
yeah, I actually started on with Acro Power uh, again recently, and I, I I think I saw more like axial growth tips popping out. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I I stopped. I can't remember why. There was a couple things were not looking great, and I just feel like I've been dosing something new, and, and something's not looking as good. I would say that a lot of things actually look better, but I'm just I'll just stop for a little while and see if it you know subsides, yeah. and then maybe I'll start again. I just want to feel really confident that what I'm adding is doing something positive because um i mean aqua power is a good good product i think it's a pretty safe product yeah it's yeah. it's just always hard to know how much amino you're getting through your foods and and other things right so mm-hmm. um, i've found that aminos had more of an impact on systems back in the day when i used to run like super low nutrient you know okay. um, but uh yeah um yeah. so i feed like a like a cocktail of like a, a bunch of different uh, like some stuff just from like the grocery store, like some shrimp and salmon and stuff. And I, I have uh, plankton that's like right from like local waters here. It's like an ocean plankton. And it's like oh, just nice. freaking like the best fish food. I'm sure the corals get tons out of it too. Uh, I put some a little bit of reefroids in. Uh, I even put nori right in and blend it up. So the nori is kind of all saturated with all the, all the other gunk. So that's kind of my main food. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as dosing, like, um, for trace, I do the fauna, um, bowing trace. So they, so I add that to my, I actually don't use the fauna, um, like their calcium chloride and stuff. I just have a cheaper source for it. So, um, yeah, how BRS has their, their setup kind of, yeah. And then the other thing is, um, like for, uh, my alkalinity component, like I find a lot of the ones that are manufactured, um, don't have as much soda ash in them. So I mix like a 50, 50 bicarb to soda ash. So I get more, uh, you know, buffering out of it for pH. Um, but, uh, yeah, I also run a calcium reactor and I dose calc at night. <laughs> so, oh, okay. yeah, I mean, and I've been doing, um, two part, I'm always scared to switch to the calcium reactors. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the calcium reactor does put some phosphates into the tank and I, my systems have always run pretty lean on the, the phosphates. So, uh, so I think you get a little bit from the reactor media as it gets, if it's the reborn, um, because mm-hmm. it's in those coral skeletons. Um, and then I do end up having to dose nitrate and phosphate. Otherwise my levels like bottom out. It's, just, I mean, just the, the biomass in my system, like per gallon is just like, you know, every <laughs> inch of the rack yeah. is covered in coral. So you I know. have the same issue. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, you, you could see it as being complicated that I have three different methods of, of uh, supplying my major elements. But I think if anything, it's like the redundancy actually gives me some security because, you know, if uh, my calcium reactor line gets blocked or something like that, I'm still dosing, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm not going to see this major so drop in alkalinity. It's, it's you know, probably only going to drop 0. 0.5 in a day versus... Try- What's that? You don't use a trident? I do use a trident, yeah. So the trident okay. will, it'll let me know if anything's, you know, shifting. Yeah, a little off. Somewhat, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm still, like, I, I still think elk swings can kill corals. I just think it really has to be, like, really fast and really dramatic. Like, I mm-hmm. think a 0.5 swing is, like, most people will see it on their tank every day anyways. Like, I don't think that's a huge, I mean, you know. I think you can go up to one. yeah. Yeah, for sure. You can have a one swing and it'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, totally. But I also uh, noticed that if the corals, if your tank is cleaner, like your nutrients are lower, then they'll die a lot quicker than if if the tank is dirtier. Yeah, I totally, they have high nutrients, totally agree. They can, they can take more of a swing and more, you know, any little issue you might have or hiccup in the tank. Yeah, no, for sure. I think they're just generally just like, they're fat, they're like fatter corals. Like they're more, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're healthy yeah, and healthy. fat and they're, they're athletes. They're ready for, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I shouldn't say fat, but yeah, they're, they're, they're healthier. Yeah. I mean, people talk about polyp extension and I, and I kind of say it's not, it's not really about polyp extension. It's about polyp health. Like if a, if a polyp is healthy, it will extend more. It's like, you know, yeah, you they need it, energy to be able to extend the polyps too. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's not all about, you know, people think, Oh, what, what's, what can I do differently about my flow? It's like, yeah, you can change the flow a little bit and you might get some variation in polyp extension, but it, you know, if, if a coral is really healthy, it's going to put its polyps out. And what do you think gives you the, the polyp extension, the food or the health? Uh, I think it's mostly the health. I mean, if I turn the flow off 
and I feed, I'd note, I mean, the millies and stuff like that, you see polyps like come out more for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, ex I experimented in my LPS system for a little while, uh, like having some of the pumps come off for like an hour at a time and just kind of give them a break. Yeah. And I did get better like LPS polyp extension doing that. Um, but I mean, are they extending because they want to for health like or is it just because the flow is lighter and that's what they do like is it a do they that's, require I've it noticed they do sure. that the flow is off as well yeah so i mean it's obviously a good time to feed if you're going to feed like um it, like i'll turn off the flow in my lps system and and i'll just instead of feeding the fish directly i'll just baste it all into my you know torch garden or whatever and the fish will just get yeah. whatever's whatever's left so you know i mean what i usually do is i i'll turn off the um I have a program on the Apex to where I can turn off the return and it turns off my power heads for five minutes. Yeah. And I can feed the fish, you know, they can grab their food in peace without getting blown around. And then when the power heads turn back on, I pour in the food for the corals. Yeah. Nice. And it stays off for half an hour. So it lets it, you know, it lets the corals catch everything. Nothing gets wasted down the overflow. Yeah. Yeah, totally. that's how I do it every day. Yeah, so what do you tell me about your feeding regimen? I know you're a big advocate of the uh, oyster feast. I saw your your little video on yeah. that. Um, are you still feeding you know, that? Like, I've always used oyster feasts. Like originally, since back in the day, I used to use oyster feast, fuel, and actor power. Yeah, those are like my main staples. And then I started, you know, over the years, you start learning more and changing. So then I went to, then I started getting to the trace elements, like I said earlier. So I dropped the fuel. I'm doing the Tropic Marin A and K for traces. Yeah. So I got that. And then I have, I'm still using Acro Power, but I just switched it out for the aminos from um, the same people that I was saying, the oh, yeah. Essentials. Yeah, this is that Aussie company. Yeah. 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 They've been around for years. I tried it years ago, but they I just finally was able to get them again. So that's why I want to try it. Yeah. So I'm using their amino and their grow now. And I just stopped. Acro Power and KZ Coral Vitalizer, mm -hmm. because to be honest with you, I don't know what that Coral Vitalizer yeah, was doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for so, sure. It just smells like vinegar. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It, it looks it looks kind of like Oyster Feast mixed with something. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm using Oyster Feast, Fido, um, the Amino and the Grow and the CVE from Australia. For traces, I'm doing the Tropic Marin. Uh, for powder, I use Coral Frenzy, mm -hmm. and then. Um, the flatworm stop that we talked about. And I think that's it. And you feed the I flatworm all... stop at the same time you feed all this other stuff? Yeah, I mix it all together yeah. into a little measuring cup. Nice. You know, I, I have a magnetic stir. Yeah. Mix it all real good. And then I have to add nitrates as well. What yeah. I do for the phosphates, I try not to feed phosphates directly if I don't have to, unless I have dinos or something. Yeah. If I need to raise phosphates, I'll just try adding more dry foods, like yeah. more pellets. Uh, like I have the Apex auto feeders. Yeah. So I'll have the auto feeder run, you know, one more time, one more spin a day, or or I'll add more of the coral frenzy or the powder. Yeah. Even though that doesn't give me too much phosphate, but it's not like refroids. Refroids yeah. is pure phosphate. Yeah, if you it really is need it. for sure. Yeah. And I do. I mean, I agree. I think getting phosphates out of out of foods is uh, definitely a better source than having to dose it. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, for whatever reason, I just, if I don't add phosphates these days, I, I just go to zero, like in a very short amount of time. So no, yeah, I'm having the same exact yeah. issue. In all my if I don't, not my display system, but the one over here that I just switched out the other day that I had to get a new tank. Yeah. That one, if, if I don't dose nitrates or anything, like every time I go on vacation, I've been trying to stabilize it because every time I leave for a couple of days, something dies. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. I left for like four <laughs> days last time came back there's like four dead colonies Fuck. the nutrients were all low and i'm like what the hell man what, what do i do yeah no totally i uh really notice a difference in my millipora when my phosphates are low like it, they mm -hmm. they gotta have phosphates like and my oh also also um before i forget i'm using easy sps the the evo gel the one that goes on the doser okay sorry what is this I've never seen it. i don't think i know about this no it's a little, it's a silver pouch and it comes with a little, you can plug your doser into it. It has mm -hmm. like a little spigot. Mm -hmm. And then it's basically, it looks like Oyster Feast. And I guess it kind of smells like Oyster Feast. It's supposed to be like a phyto, like a plankton mix. Yeah. So I'm using that also. So when I leave on vacation, I can leave something being fed to the system 
without me having to feed it because I manually yeah. feed all those foods every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't have a local local person that can feed for you. Do you have some? some I mean, checkers? I do, <laughs> I do, but I mean, I don't want to bother anybody, you know, to, yeah. to come. I've always I've always dealt with it myself. I used to put auto feeders on the tank and just yeah. just go. But now I got the Easy SPS and I got the Apex auto feeder, so I think with that. It should be okay. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, I'll put a couple of these things you're doing. I'm gonna I'll do show notes and I'll put these in the show notes if uh, people don't know about those products because uh, people are always looking for something new to try out. You know, there's I feel like yeah. there's this kind of like uh, I don't know fantasizing part to the hobby that you're gonna make a change and it's gonna be like this is gonna make it better. <laughs> you know. So yeah, looking for that magic. Bullet. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like it's very rare and it's so case by case. You know that what works and what doesn't. Uh, something I wanted to ask you about that I have noticed in my systems is sort of lacking lately. And it's, it's something I just can't quite like pin down is, uh, the fluorescent green base pigments, like PC rainbow is one of those corals that has that fluorescent kind of orange green pigments, uh, you know, red planet yeah. or a red planet always had that green metallic base i find a lot of those corals for me lately have don't have a, a lot of that metallic base and i'm well, the, unsure the green comes what... from lower lighting yeah you think it's more of a lighting related than, yeah than it is yeah, anything it definitely is yeah if you want more green like on a pc rainbow yeah like the pc rainbow i know a lot about because that was one of the first high ends that i ever bought <laughs> yeah i still have probably grown in my display yeah that one um if you give it too much light it'll go red you know, all red. Yeah, and it'll grow fast. If you get it medium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you give it like the medium light, it'll turn like that orange red. Yeah. You'll get the orange in the center. Yeah. And then if you don't give it enough light, you'll get the green toward the bottom, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's definitely light based if you want green. Yeah. I mean, I've wondered if it had to do with uh, some of the metals in the trace elements. Um, you know, one thing I notice on my ICPs is uh, often my iron is is totally like zero, and it's obviously just being used uh, quickly by I mean, the system. Mine is as but, well. I mean, if we're talking about metallic pigments, like my assumption is that they have something to do with metal, but it also could just be yeah. the proteins and how they reflect light and what we actually see. I mean, it's it has to do with the metals, but you're you're dosing it like you said, right? You're dosing trace elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, I think yeah, just yeah. the volume of coral in my system, uh, you know, versus what's coming in, it's like if those trace elements are needed, they're probably used like super, super fast. So, um, yeah, I have I have the same issue. Mine doesn't show anything when you look at the you know the metals. Yeah, most of them say zero, but as long as you're adding it, that's that's how I've always tried to run run the tanks. Yeah. As long as you're adding a little bit, you know there's something in there. Well, yeah, and you know it's getting used because if you're adding it and yeah. it's gone, then, you know, yeah. I think another thing that's really important is to not have any macroalgae. Like, I, I do have spots in my tank where the tanks can't reach and there's, uh, you know, that ulva or kind of like lettuce type algae. Uh, and I think that algae yeah. is really efficient at pulling some of those metals out. Um, it is. Yeah, the the ulva is actually one of the better ones. Yeah. But I mean, I always use Shado in my systems. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. I use Shado to keep nutrients in there under control, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've never had, I've never had to resort to uh, a nutrient export via um, algae, but, uh, or intentionally anyways. I mean, it's definitely has grown in tanks when I didn't want it, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've always done it just from when I started. So I feel like it does something to help the tank biologically. Like it keeps a balance in the system. Yeah. I don't know if the shadow maybe pulls something that, you know, something that's bad for the tank or to keep any algae down at the top, you know, from growing in your displays. Yeah. You but, haven't noticed that it, like it, it wouldn't bottom out your nutrients too fast. It's just kind of part of whatever is dialed in and it just kind of keeps it at bay. Oh well, yeah. I have everything dialed in, but you'll notice sometimes like recently, the shadow just started growing amazing in that tank. I just switched out. I'm not really sure why, to be honest. I don't know if it's because the it's it's a little bit more water volume, or it's just the new tank is clean and yeah. I don't know something. But the shadow looks a lot better now than it did before. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But it's I've always had it. I mean, if it doesn't grow, it doesn't grow. As long as it's not dying, I trim it back. I have it spinning. You know, I try to keep it with a power head to spin. Yeah. It grows a lot more efficient and fast. When you yeah. do make a spin. 
And I guess, I mean, if that's just part of your uh, your style of reefing and if it works for you, you might as well just keep mm -hmm. doing it, right? I mean, there's no yeah. point pulling it out. Um, well, the thing is, I don't have um, the used filtration, like mechanical and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't uh, use any no, of yeah, no, I don't use any filter rollers or anything. Um, I use... Uh, I use filter socks, but I use the like the mesh ones, not the super fine ones. So uh, they, yeah. you know, they just get them basic debris. And honestly, you can just take them in the bathtub or with a good sprayer. You can spray them out. You don't even have to put them in the washing machine. So, yeah, um, yeah. so that's what I've been doing. I don't use anything at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my tank goes from a to a skimmer. Yeah. Are your sumps, do you keep live rock in your sumps? Um, I mean, in one system, I'll have like a piece of rock, maybe. Okay, yeah. So one of the systems. Up. Yeah. See, my yeah, uh, my sumps tend to have a lot of live rock in them, and one thing that I try to do a couple times a year is pull out all the rock and just like blast all the detritus and do a water change and and basically add yeah. it back. But. Uh, you can't just vacuum it out with the vacuum? No, I mean, it just gets in all the little crevices and whatnot. So, um, and oh, the tank seems so. to do better after I do it. So, honestly, it's something I probably need to do in the next week. I definitely put it off, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I've been using, um, actually, on my systems, I have the max spec on the Frank systems, at least, because the display system has a lot of rock. But yeah, the Frank systems, I've been using those max spec balls, like those ceramic. I don't know if you've seen them. Yeah. I have those and I have the bricks in yeah. those systems. Okay. But I do have live rock in, in them in the top a little bit. Like I put I'll put like a little corner. I'll build like a little rockscape, you know, for the fish just to kind of have a space for themselves. Yeah. Just so they're not stressed. Yeah. And I mean I guess like I find that like unless you're swapping your racks all the time, like your tank kind of becomes kind of the surfaces kind of become live rock anyways, you know, oh, eventually. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's one of the things I know you just did a, a tank uh, upgrade or transfer and and one of the things that uh that we can't account for is the bacteria on the surfaces is just not there so i do find did you get a little bit of an algae cycle on the on the glass after the move or? um not really i i was it actually has gone better than i expected yeah i was really really worried about it i mean i planned that that swap out for like a week yeah i had everything what was the uh like but, the volume the volume difference um, the original, the tank I took out was like a 90 gallon. It was a standard six by two by one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about 90 gallons. And then the new one I think is uh, 120. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I left everything else the same. The sump is the same. Yeah. I use the exact same water, you know, everything else is, I didn't, I tried to keep as much stuff as I could from the old system. Yeah. Yeah. So the only stuff that was new was the tank itself and some of the water, probably about 30 gallons might yeah. have been new. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. everything else, it went okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, really, like all the biomass of the system is the corals, anyways, right? Mm -hmm. Corals in the fish and whatever rock you kept. Yeah, and if the sump's the same, then yeah, that's easy. Yeah, I did a pretty major move when I moved to this place uh, in later 2020, and it was like I had new tanks built, and I was moving up about double the volume. Um, so something I did is I just like did a big water change out of the tanks at the old place into the new system and i kind of did i did a couple of those big water changes so i had probably 50 50 water from the old system in the new system uh and then we just started bringing stuff over and it was just like fine it was just like you know like nothing really yeah, no, you, <laughs> you know you yeah. Way. yeah i mean was, i think the perfect. thing that happens more often when people do uh, a move is it's more likely that like somebody's gonna you know you got a long day ahead of you you hook up all your apex and your probes and controllers and like something's not quite seated in the water properly or you know just some stupid little mm -hmm. thing happens right like that's gonna be more likely to cause a crash and sometimes you 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 know you're not prepared and uh you know if the water gets too cold yeah too yeah hot, yeah mess everything up big time it's tough i mean I luckily did... i was able to move all my corals into another system yeah that's good yeah if you had the space that was for one it. of the things that saved me here i mean i did my tank move in uh the middle of december um and i'm like well i'm in the west coast of canada but uh you know like it's it's it, you know cold like, close to freezing <laughs> like it's probably it's always yeah. cold <laughs> yeah i mean not where we are it's uh we're more like seattle like washington kind of thing here similar similar okay. weather but uh but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, you just have to be fast. I mean, we just, uh, I had big totes and put egg crate in the bottom so the corals could kind of, kind of stay, kind of not crash around too much and just drove mm -hmm. easy and, 
and uh yeah we just put them straight in and yeah everything went really well so yeah um, where do you keep your levels out of your systems so your, i guess yeah i was going to ask you this too and i didn't want to sort of talk about stuff that's too say like we all probably yes. let's uh, let's talk about <laughs> the things that we do differently assuming that we probably keep our alkalinity somewhere between 8 and 8.5 uh yeah you know uh i would say i've paid a little more attention to magnesium recently uh, just making sure that it's always above the 1400, I think really makes a difference. Um, like there's been years where I've kind of let it drift down and been like, ah, magnesium doesn't matter that much. And then I'll bring it back up and I'll be like, oh yeah, no, things are happier for sure. Especially LPS. I keep it. I usually let it ride wherever it wants to be. It's like 1350. Yeah. And somewhere. that's super fine too. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I have tried raising it, like you said, to 1400. It's just it always comes back down. I don't know why. I, yeah. I think it's the uh, just when you do the water changes. Yeah. And then it just goes back to wherever that that salt comes in. Yeah. Which salt do you use? Uh, so I've been using the blue bucket. Actually, not entirely. I use Red Sea, but I mix the blue bucket with the black bucket, <laughs> oh, <laughs> which okay. I don't know if they would advise against it, but. Uh, I've heard, bucket, I've heard of people doing that, actually. Yeah, I mean, I think it's basically the same formula, just the black bucket has really high alkalinity. A few other things are a little bit elevated. Um, mm. But I don't want to do a water change with uh, alkalinity of 11 on a system that's at, sitting around 8.3, 8.5. Uh, so yeah. I figured out it's about a 4 to 1 ratio if you take the blue bucket. So 4 mm -hmm. to 1 of the black bucket will get the alkalinity around 8.5. It's like kind of just the money money zone. Uh, so that's what I've been doing. And I, honestly, like I get a good price on that salt and I think it's good. Like that's that's what I use as well. So yeah, um, <laughs> I use blue bucket. Yeah, like salt is one of those things that people really like, again, like talk, going back to saying like how people want to make a change and think something looks better. It's like I <laughs> I made this joke on uh, to Keith when I did the the reef bum. That's just about how, you know, hobbyists hobbyists. Uh, you know, think that their tanks better because they switched to this salt, but it's like really just at the end of the day, it's like, well, you also, you just did a water change. When's the last time you did a water change? <laughs> <You know? laughs> you haven't done a water change yeah. in six months. It's it's the common denominator is that you did a water change. So you do, you do a four to one with the pro being one. Yeah. 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 Cause the, yeah. what does that give you an out? Like nine? Yeah. It, no, it's around 8.5, 8 to 8.5. Oh, 8 okay. Yeah. So yeah, I can't see any reason to not do it. I mean, like, I mean, you always take a risk with salt. If you're not mixing the entire bucket at a time, there's always a chance that some of the elements have, like, you know, leveled slightly differently in the bucket. Yeah, but, I always say that, but I've never yeah. really noticed an issue. Yeah. And I, do, thing, I don't do a lot of changes either. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do about 15 to 20% at a time, uh, probably like about once a month kind of thing. Uh, sometimes a little Ooh, less. I do 10% a week. Yeah. Okay. So fairly so regular. Much. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, there have been years where I've ridden it out and not done a lot of water changes and had systems do really well. Um, which surprises me looking back because I wasn't paying any attention to trace elements back then either. <laughs> you know, so what does that tell yeah. you? <laughs> that's how, that's how it used to be back when I used to use fuel and acro power. Like we didn't pay attention to any of that. Yeah. And I feel like tanks were doing great. Yeah. Like I had a red planet colony that was like, it was like probably 14 inches, but it had like three or four spirals. So it was like, just kept going. <laughs> like it was so massive. And I grew that thing in like only like maybe two years or something. It was just absolutely ridiculous. So I don't know. That was under metal halides too. So I don't know that if that was one of the parts of it, but. Yeah. Metal highlights helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But also your, your mixture of the three, the three dosing uh, methods makes your coals grow faster as well yeah for sure yeah and like i'm not using halides anymore but uh when i did i mean obviously corals grew fast now it's just like a mishmash of uh i've got a f like led bars some radions uh and i got t5s that i just run for like i'm just running them two hours a day just kind of for fill uh because i, mean, I, I had like... the t5s and i feel like the tank was doing better with the t5s than yeah. the switch and now they're just so well but diffused I was trying to get rid of them and it's such a, it's kind of like, I feel like, uh, if you think of LED, it's like almost like a digital light form. Like it's very like, 
you know, here are the frequencies of the light. Yeah, and you like, get a mixture. You don't yeah. Get a and, and I mean, they've gotten better and better. They're better diffusion now. But but I think like T5 is more like just a nice warm arc and same with any other, um, you know, halide or whatever. But yeah, I feel like the T5s just kind of uh, they fill in that extra little space in the coral. And and uh, yeah, I mean, in the same way, like I feel like tanks can do well on just LED. I've seen lots of nice tanks that are all all just all radions, but you got to get enough of them to really like fill all those little gaps if you get shadowing i feel like acros don't like it no and then you get when you pick up frags you have those little dark spots yeah yeah like you can see where the led is not hitting it it's yeah. crazy because you, you would think the whole thing is getting light but it doesn't yeah yeah no for sure yeah yeah if uh i mean it's it's not like the sun that's moving across the sky every day i mean it's if you mm -hmm. think about the sun it's like shifting across and it's like hitting every little nook and cranny of every coral that yeah it passes it's by. even it's even light as well mm. Yeah. I mean, I went to G6 Blues and uh, Reef Braids. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm still trying to dial them in. Uh, I mean, it's everything's doing well, but the colors aren't quite where I want them yet. Yeah. The G6 Blues, I don't think have enough of a white channel in them. I wish they had a little more white. That's, that's what I'm thinking as well. I'm kind of, yeah. I was kind of like, man, I should have bought the pros. Yeah. I feel exactly the same way. Yeah. I, I switched one system over to the G6 Blues and. I was like, I turned the whites up to 100%, like the warm and the and the cool or whatever. And I was just like, that's it? That's all you got? <laughs> you no, know? No, you measured the par? It's only like 30, 40 par with yeah. all the colors on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cor my corals didn't change much. It was kind of the same. I was just on the G5 blues before that. So, oh, yeah. Okay. But uh, actually, so another thing I want to ask you about, uh, we were kind of briefly touched on trace elements, but uh, are you doing regular ICPs? Are you kind of like going down that road much? Um, I mean, not really, because I like, I don't like to get too crazy with it. You know how people do like the Triton or the Aqua Forest or Reef Moonshiners or whatever? Yeah. How you do each element one by one? I don't want to do that. Like <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that at all costs. Yeah. That's, that's not... I like the tanks have enough issues to deal with to yeah. not be dealing with one more, you know, crazy little step by step thing I have to do. Yeah, I mean, and so your corals do, look good to too. Yeah, your corals uh, look good. That's the thing, right? You got good color, yeah, yeah, you got no, good growth. Great. Yeah. But um, I mean, I used to use, like I said, the fuel the tank did fine all those years, and also my two part has traces in it because I use two little fishies, uh, Sea Balance. Mm -hmm. So that has a little bit of trace elements in yeah. it as well. So it's the salt. But then, you know, I started getting into this whole ICP thing, and that's when I started looking for different ways to dose traces. I did the KZ for a while, mm -hmm. the one, two, three, four yeah. that they have. That one actually tells you what's in it. It's one of the yeah. few products actually oh, says yeah. what's in it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, I was using that, but then I found a buddy of mine that recommended, he was like, hey, man, why don't you use the Tropic Marin? It's only two bottles. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, let me, you know, let me look into it. And I've tried it. I'm going to be honest with you. It's kind of a set and forget yeah, I haven't had any issues with it. You just dose it according to the to the bottle. Mm -hmm. You know, I do when I dose, I don't calculate the sump. I just calculate whatever the display tank is. Mm -hmm. So all the stuff that I feed the tank is always by just the display. I don't ever count the sump because the sump doesn't need traces or mm -hmm. oyster feast or whatever. You know? Yeah. So I'm just doing whatever the display tank requires, and the traces stay. I mean, they're they're perfectly fine. Like you said, iron's always low. Yeah. I mean, that's normal. I think it's just algae using it up or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And there's certain metals that are usually low, but whenever I try to raise them, I don't know if it's just if it's just a coincidence, but every time I try to dose a little bit more to try to raise those metals, I feel like the tank stops consuming as much alkalinity. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know if it's a coincidence or it's just something that it doesn't yeah. like the extra dose, it doesn't need it. Yeah. I mean, with the the kind of volume of coral in like our systems, like like any kind of little thing that affects like alkalinity consumption is like magnified. So, you know, I'm sure you're mm -hmm. probably, you're probably right that it could be something. I mean, I always underdose what is recommended when it comes to, even when they say, uh, like I do uh, the adjustments, I don't do moonshiners, but I do like a similar kind of system. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I'll do like half the rate that they say it's safe to raise it by because why not? Like okay. I can wait, like I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, to, you know, get my levels up. So, you know, if I'm dosing something like copper, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I don't want to mess oh, around man, with copper. I was surprised how much copper it told me I could put in. I was just like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go. See, like, but the thing is that every, every one of those ICPs has a different 
um, limitation or range where you can get your levels to. Like if you look at each one, each one tells you a slightly different measurement. As in what they consider to be natural seawater? Or whatever they consider yeah. to be safe. I don't yeah. know if it's natural seawater. Yeah. Because Triton, I've used ICP analysis. I've used Triton. I've used ATI. And currently I'm using um, Reef. What is the name of it? It's, it's, it's a local people down here. Um, I don't know if you know ACI. Yeah, yeah, uh, I know Chris. Star. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, Chris. Chris, um, he he has a buddy over there that has ICP, and it's called uh, what is it called again? Reef Labs. Yeah, that's the one I've been using because I actually had a I was using I was using Triton. I had a hiccup with ICP analysis first that messed me up with with um, iodine. Yeah, because they kept giving me wrong iodine. They kept telling me low iodine, low iodine, and I kept adding iodine. <laughs> Oh shit! And then one day I see the acros <laughs> peeling, and oh, I'm like, yeah. "Oh shit! What is this?" So I went and I sent out a Triton, and my iodine was like, a, I don't remember, it was like 211 or something. Wow! You know, on Triton. Yeah. So then I started using Triton, and then one day Triton gave me a hiccup on the iodine as well. It wasn't a big, you know, it might have just been a water sample issue or whatever, mm-hmm. just a small problem. Yeah. But then I tried ICP analysis, and it gave me a different reading from the Triton. I mean, not ACP, sorry, the Reef Labs. Yeah. And I've been with them ever since, and I love it because since it's in Florida, it's quick turnaround. Yeah, yeah, I bet I it's pretty send quick. Send it on, um, yeah, I send it like on a Monday, and I'll have results usually Thursday to Friday. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's similar for, uh, I use the Fauna Marine, and we have like the, the North American distributors here in Canada. So uh, if oh, I, I send it to him by Thursday... Uh, so say I, say I ship it overnight on Wednesday, I will usually get results on Monday the next week. Like, oh, nice. you know, as soon as I wake so up, I cause their, their day starts earlier over in Europe. So, <laughs> uh, so I'll get my results like, yeah, basically like four days later, which is awesome. And you do it, you do it consistently. I'm doing it about every four to six weeks, I would say. Um, yeah, I'm doing probably about the same. Yeah. Yeah. But every I, now and then when I make a change. You know, just to make sure everything's good. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and I'm uh, I've uh, thinking about trying. Uh, I might move away from doing my bowling bowling trace elements and try this isolate MT uh, from Captivate Aquaculture instead. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I know. I actually tried their uh, their powder. Yeah. The, the one of their foods. It's called Invigorate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Invigorate. I tried it out. I I didn't really notice too much. I mean, I did notice something here and there, but. I didn't want to go too crazy into it. Yeah. But I still have it there. Yeah. He, he's making that some really, some- really good stuff. His dip is like, yeah. I don't know what's in it, I, but it just, it kills it like everything. Like it just absolutely kills everything. <laughs> like, Does it get the pods too or not? I, I, yeah. I mean, from, I mean, I don't know if I had the, the pods at that time, but I just saw like so yeah. many critters in the dip. It was just nuts. And it seemed really gentle too. So. Um, yeah. it. he's got some good stuff going on. Um, I'm, yeah, uh, he does. I've got some of his products that I'm trying out right now. So, uh, I'm gonna see, I'm, it's just, the thing is you get stuff you want to try out and you really have to try to do one thing at a time, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> as per usual. <laughs> no, and then, and then you don't know if what worries me always is, I don't know if it's going to affect the tank. You know, these companies are always like, Oh yeah, just do a test tank. I'm like, I don't have a, yeah random space to just have tanks laying around to be testing lights and random products you know <laughs> yeah that would be nice for sure yeah yeah but he does have some good stuff the yeah. captivate yeah yeah no for sure i mean i feel like uh because he developed a lot of the the products for Brightwell, it was kind of like okay mm-hmm. now he's like i'm gonna do this the way i want to do it you know with have all... you tried to invigorate or no uh he sent me a food and i don't remember which one it was it was a while ago um but uh he's sending me some other stuff soon which i'm gonna gonna try out it's probably so. you probably get that in there because that's like one of their main i think that's like the main coral food or one of them yeah yeah for sure i mean have you really analyzed your corals when you feed and what actually sticks to the polyp of, of sps like do you do you find that your foods are like are you seeing it directly being consumed Mm, I mean, I don't look at it that much anymore. I yeah. used to like spot feed back in the day and I would, you know, kind of pay attention to it. But now I just kind of broadcast, like I said, once the power heads turn on. Yeah. But I sometimes, depending on certain foods, like if I try something new, like when I tried the Invigorate, 
I could see um, some LPS seem to to like it more. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. they seem to, to you know open up more, fluff up more, like a brain or some ganis and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I but mean, I, I wouldn't doubt that the the food he's using is like super, super good quality. Like, yeah. you know, the best source. I mean, Chris is just seems to be obsessed with his, his quality of stuff. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. No, but the the acros. The only thing I notice is um, I'll notice like feeders. You know, you get like the yeah. little feeder tentacles. Yeah, that's that's all I'll notice here and there. But yeah. it's, I mean, I usually have really good PE on everything, for the most part. If I don't have PE, that's usually when I know that something's wrong. <laughs> mm, yeah. Like, uh, like right now I have um, a Psychoberry and a Red Devil Nasuda and my Firecracker. They had lost PE a while ago, like a few months ago. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. I'm not sure what happened. They got light. It might have been. They might have got hurt when I had um, my doser head got stuck. And, and it was only dosing one of the elements, one mm. of the two trace. Oh, not trace, yeah. Uh, For how, many, how, how long do you figure? Uh, it wasn't that long because yeah. usually I I see a problem with the trident I check quickly but I think it was like yeah. a day and the alk went up to like nine something yeah so I think that might have pissed them off but yeah. they're coming back now have you ever had that happen where they close up polyps and then you don't yeah. see polyps for like months I actually uh, my what my sort of smaller homewrecker colony um, I have like a bigger one too and that one was fine but uh, I had a bit of an elk swing. Trying to remember why. Uh, oh, I put on a new CO2 scrubber, and I have a rule in my Apex where it only doses my calc at night if the pH is below, I think, 8.4. And because it was like new CO2 scrubber media and the elk yeah, was already high. high that day, it just like didn't end up dosing calc that night like at all because the gotta, pH just um, stayed high. You've got to set up another rule yeah. that turns on your skimmer at night automatically. Yeah, yeah. there's got to be some other... Anyways, I just put the total up, but uh, I did end up having a swing. I didn't figure it out for a couple of days, and then I ended up having a swing of about... I mean, my alkalinity went down to about 7.5, which, like we were talking about earlier, I don't think a one-point swing is super dangerous, but uh, the home wrecker no, for about three or four days was polyps in, and I was like, worried about it um and yeah. then uh the alkalinity i just slowly brought it back up to the 8.3 to 8.5 range and pops like fully out again so it's just a very direct you know like sign of and have it you, didn't like that lower have you noticed, alkalinity. Like, on, let me see let me see on your let's see if i can find a picture of it have you noticed any of your tenuouses that are pink like the home wrecker have you noticed what brings out the pink um i think I think with home wrecker it shouldn't get too much light. I think similar to what we were talking about before is uh I think some tenuous don't like that crazy highlight. Um I mean, I've been that's one of the things that I've been struggling with. Yeah. For years and I've never been able to figure out what is the cause of the pinks on tenuous. Yeah. Like I've I've that's why I've experimented with iodine, potassium, mm-hmm. all types of things. I've tried everything. Yeah, and I just cannot figure out what it is. I don't know if it's nutrient related or if it's lighting related. Yeah, like I, I have th- moments where my antennas get really pink, and then they'll go back and they'll lose their pinks again. Yeah, so it's like, like the my same. My homework is basically green. <laughs> yeah, so same lighting, uh, same essentially major conditions are the same, but you just notice that some of those pinks are just kind of less vibrant. Yeah, you don't get yeah. like the, you know how sometimes you'll get like a. I don't know if you have this one over there, but like um, Cherry Coral's pink highlighter. Yeah, no, you know we don't. Yeah. No, you know I don't it? know that one. Well, that one turns a nice bright pink. Like it's probably one of the nicest pink tenuouses you can get. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it'll just go green, blue, with like little hints of pink core lights. And then other times, like right now, it's doing really good for me. And it's mostly pink. Yeah. And the frags are incredible. Like one of the frags I have is just the nicest frag i have in the yeah frag yeah right yeah sometimes it's funny when sometimes you make a frag and it looks better than the colony <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It happens to me all the time yeah 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 no i'm not sure i mean i uh i do notice the same thing where there's a there's a, a, a phasing of, of times where certain colors just pop more um yeah i mean i have to think it has something to do with uh certain trace elements but uh, it could also be like a nutrient ratio thing too. I mean, our nutrient ratio is always kind of like shifting a little bit. The phosphate, 
yeah. nitrogen ratio. Yeah, that's never stable. I'm not going to lie about that. Yeah. That is never stable. I it think always it's... goes every week. You have to adjust it. Yeah. I have I th- to adjust every single week, uh, nitrate, you know, up and down a little bit. Yeah, goes. just little adjustments. Yeah. I think it's like it's easy to kind of want to blame light as the cause of, of, of issues. You know, you want to be like, oh, maybe I should change, you know, change my light schedule. But then just remember, like, no, this coral grew to this size under this lighting schedule yeah. and it was fine. <laughs> it's like obviously not the fucking lighting. Like the lighting's fine. <laughs> do you use, uh, how much part do you use on your setup? Uh, I'm not crazy high on the par. Like I would say at the surface, it might hit about 450 to 500. Um Okay. Yeah, That's but like, but the corals have. that are getting the most that are like they're going to be three or four inches below the surface, probably sitting in three fifty to four hundred. That would be like the absolute peak. Um, no. And then yeah, I run. Um, yeah. currently I'm running. I had it a little higher before, but with the reef brights and the new G sixes, I think the the per is too strong. The the blue and UV per. Yeah. I think it's stronger than it was before, so I couldn't go up to three fifty. I used to have three fifty with just blue. Now I'm at 300 blue, and then the peak of the day is like 450. Yeah, yeah, which is only like four hours in the. You yeah, know? you're so you probably have a similar uh, peak to what I do. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah. I mean, what is your opinion on the higher nutrients uh, versus higher light? Like, because I've heard like mixed opinions on this, and that if you have lower nutrients, corals can take more light. But that to me sounds counterintuitive no. because. I guess the idea behind it is that if there's lower nutrients, you're supplying more energy to the zooxanthellae via more light. But I just don't think that the corals like are like robust and, and healthy enough to take that light if they're under, no, you know, it's under the other large. way around. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing that I have experimented with when my nutrients have been higher is I've, I've bumped my schedule up a little bit here or there experimentally. Um, and I have noticed that Millie's. Millies can take a lot of light, and milliporas seem to get better color. Yeah, that's definitely when, the highest. Yeah, the highest taking, the highest that can take light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, back when I first started out with the radions and the other lights, I don't know how the hell I used to pull it off, but I had seven eight hundred par at the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the corals were thriving. I don't, I don't get it. Now I'm like doing, like I said, you know, three hundred to four fifty, five hundred. And they're not as, they're just not doing as as good as I feel like they used to back in the day. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's hard to say. I mean, like I said, there's certain things I used to just grow like weeds that don't do as well for me now. But then like, I don't think I could yeah. keep <laughs> the color on some of these like fancy tenuous and stuff that I can now. You know, there's certain pieces that like, you know, they probably wouldn't have done much in my old system. Um, yeah. You know, it was kind of survival of the fittest and those corals were nice, but like yeah now it's like you're just you're trying to keep so many corals happy <laughs> you know it's like yeah, this. same time yeah i i think i, I mean I, I keep them by sections too like yeah i tend to put the tenuouses together i have the millies together yeah. so that if they touch they don't burn each other and stuff yeah yeah i mean something i'm a little bit more interested in instead of uh like actual par numbers is is like that distribution of light i think distribution matters in a lot more because like well, like we were talking about before with the shadowing thing with with leds is if mm-hmm. you're getting a par reading like you're getting a par reading with a sensor that's below the light like you're not getting a par reading in that little nook that the light's not hitting so like i think it's more yeah. important that we have like a wash of light that just kind of hits every part of the coral versus you know like this kind of yeah static... I, I, agree. I agree yeah i do the same you know i have a uh the i have four radions g6 plus two reef bright bars so i'm trying to like cover as much as i can i try to create a blanket like you said yeah but i mean it's not it still won't compare it to a t5 yeah are these xr30s yeah yeah is, and is that on a like a six foot tank yeah six feet. yeah okay yeah so six feet and you got four yeah okay mm-hmm. yeah yeah no that's that's a good amount of light I mean, yeah, that's a lot of light. Usually yeah. I run three for that. Usually I run one per two feet. Yeah. But since since I was getting G6s, I ordered four because I was like, oh, maybe the coverage is less than the, than the fours that I had, you know, and I tried it, but then it worked out. Yeah. I mean, I like yeah. it. I like it the way it is because it allows me to to move some closer to the edges of the tank. 
and then you know the center ones and they blanket each other so they cover more angles mm-hmm. versus if i had three i would have to move them in and the edges would have been shadowed they wouldn't have that much light yeah yeah no it's it's nice when you can like utilize every part of the tank for sure um mm-hmm. yeah my my main sps system is uh six by three or yeah six by three foot by 14 high yeah. i kind of wish i went 16 high but um, that's what i did on a new one yeah I yeah the, the, it's the lps system yeah i think you just get a little bit more flexibility for flow patterns and and you know mm-hmm. you might as well just get the extra volume too like it doesn't hurt right i love it because the extra three inches the other tank was 13 you know mm-hmm. if you count the outside the euro brace and everything yeah. this one was 16 kind of euro brace yeah and it, those three inches of water level have made such a difference with flow yeah i could not can have the gyres up top and they're just shooting everywhere and mm-hmm. there's no issue yeah nice before they were hitting like some of the actors that grew too tall and it would you know get tipped over get blown around a little bit yeah now it's perfect nice yeah well it's nice to hear you're happy with your upgrade because it's not a massive upgrade it's like <laughs> yeah. you, you got an extra six inches or something of uh of width well, well the thing yeah. is i needed to change it i had to change yeah. it because the acrylic tank was um it was uh the euro brace was coming off like yeah. I understand why it was working somehow. I don't oh, know. so yeah, you Lights. were kind of looking at a potential, inevitable, possible yeah. situation. Yeah, no, you don't yeah, want to be in that suck. situation. That's good. Yeah, no, uh, my my tanks are all built by a company called Concept. Um, that's in uh, Alberta. They're awesome. They build really good tanks. Um, nice, you know, nice polished edges, like uh, mm-hmm. good quality glass, uh, and good pricing too. So that's that's who's built all of my tanks. Yeah, I had mine done by um, Bob and Karen. I don't know if you know who they are. I've heard the names, the I think. Make... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they make all the tanks for Worldwide. Yeah, All those nice. tanks that you see Worldwide uh, delivering everywhere. Yeah. They build them. Cool. And they do they do good They do good work, reasonable prices. Yeah. And they're local, which yeah. is the best part. Yeah, they're here good. in Miami. Yeah, so... I know. And I guess, uh, I mean, there's a pretty big scene in, in uh, Florida overall. It seems like there's a lot of, like, you know, little either little smaller businesses like you and then there's like the big mm-hmm. major players too so you got a more of a scene but i think all the biggest stores are here yeah you know you got you got Big reef you got worldwide and you got top shelf yeah they're all in the window yeah 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 it's cool yeah no i'm uh talking about making a trip out to florida probably in the next uh few months so uh if we come to miami i'll uh <laughs> i'll try to hit you up yeah, I mean, if you yeah. make it down south, yeah. just, just remember that Orlando is uh, is like three and a half hours from yeah. here. <laughs> well, I mean, three and a half hours isn't a big deal when you're already like traveling somewhere and, you know, if you got a purpose. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, actually, a lot of people usually come down here and they, you know, they message me and they're like, hey, we're going to Disney World. Can we come visit you? And I'm like, um, four hours away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from where you're at. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. oh, OK, OK, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. Yeah, no, I think this this would potentially be just a reef related trip. Uh, maybe a little bit of, you know, you, you know, Disney, maybe, maybe possibility, yeah. but that's not the priority. <laughs> uh, oh, I actually I mean, it's you're here, you might as well. Yeah, I have a question for you about a like a little ongoing issue I've had with a couple acros. Um, so it's a couple of different species that have a tendency to do this. Uh, vivid confetti is one that does it for me. Um, it'll do great for a period of time and then it starts to, the skin kind of starts to smooth over and the polyps kind of retract and it kind of gets dark in the inner branches. Um, and it'll happen to, there's a couple other corals that have a tendency to do it. Like I found that, uh, like pink lemonade does it as well, which is kind of a similar species. Uh, and it'll be like yeah, super similar dark and it almost like almost spreads like it's an infection it doesn't it's not like does it die it it can eventually die if it doesn't turn around in time um my thinking of it was that it was a bacterial thing and at one point uh someone suggested i do a chemicline treatment and uh it seemed to help uh but I, I can't say for sure if it wasn't something else that happened at the same time. You know, um, it's funny you say that. I have a local friend here that has um, local reefers. that He has a nine-foot tank. Mm-hmm. And um, he's having the exact same issue in his tank. But it's all SPS. Yeah. Not, not I wouldn't say all of them, but yes, a lot of them. And the species that you're saying is probably one of them. 
But his they turn black and then the tips retain color, right? Yeah, the tips the keep tips the color, still... yeah. 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 And like strawberry shortcake can do it too. I think they're kind of all yeah. in that similar. I think maybe they're more like Aussie, like the microclados. Yeah, his strawberry family. shortcake did it for yeah. sure. Um yeah. his ASD, Rainbow Millie did it. Yeah. Hmm. Um man, I've been trying to figure out what it is in his tank and it has to be I was saying the same thing. It has to be a bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. And so we did a chemi clean. But I don't know how strong he did it. I told him to do it because you can do chemical clean up to three days mm -hmm. is the maximum. Yeah. Um, it's in a video with uh, Mark Mark Levinson. Or, I don't remember. Why, why is there a maximum on it? He, uh, do you know why? I don't know. Because yeah. it kills bacteria. So I don't know if you would. Maybe it'll mess up your bio. Yeah. Or your tank. Yeah. I don't you know? know. I've always just left left it in and then, you know, I'll eventually do a water change or put some carbon on. But I don't I'm not like got to do it after two days or three days. Like it doesn't. I don't I, know if. It, yeah, I leave it. I yeah. leave it for three days. Total yeah. And then I'll do a water change. But yeah. I mean, you have you tried Cipro? Uh, so I have Cipro. I'm a little bit like hesitant to do a full system with it. Um, you know, that being said, like, I mean, this whole all this bacteria discussion that's been happening lately, I feel like you can feel do like, it. I, I it feel like no maybe questions. we're taking ourselves a little too seriously, like with our little reef tanks, you know, that we think that, you know, <laughs> messing around with bacteria is going to have some, you know, effect on like, you know, the ecology of, of the, the earth, you know, the earth. It's have like, you, it's like, think about the, one the, of those, uh... What's that? No, I haven't done a microbiome. Have you sent one of those bacteria kits? No, I haven't yet. Uh, I've been wanting to, I, and I, I kind of want to do a two test where I do uh, a test and then do a follow up test after I've done some kind of treatment, just so I can kind of get some, you know. Man, I think I think it's a waste of money. I did it. Yeah. And honestly, what came back, I didn't understand a word that was yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah, like I've talked to Eli. I think I really like where he's going with it. Um, yeah, I actually. Uh, I when I did my tank of the month article um, in 2015 for Reef Central, I talked about how I was like, I think maybe in the future we'll start testing bacteria for reef tanks. Like I talked about it in my article, so I yeah. mentioned that to him. I was like, I talked about it. I knew you were gonna do it. <laughs> I think but, uh, I think it's still too early for that. Like we yeah. don't know enough yet. Yeah, but I, I do yeah. think that's a bacteria which you have. Yeah, and I agree. Yeah, you could do the Cipro, man. Don't don't well, be scared of it. I've done Cipro in my tank a bunch of times with zero issues. Yeah, and I've done way over the limit because mm. they say to do I think three days tops or something. Yeah, I did like a full week and a half till the dosage ran out. Yeah, okay. Because I had an issue. I don't know if you've had this issue over there. Have you ever ran into where your bounce mushrooms just start shriveling up and dying? I've had it happen with Recordia before, uh, in another system. But probably a similar kind of Maybe thing. Maybe it was it was balanced mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm sure it's just like a bacteria thing that can start happening, right? Yeah. 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 But for me, I lost all my balanced mushrooms in two systems. Oh, geez, fuck, that's expensive. I don't even know how like <laughs> how it happened. It's crazy. Yeah. Huh. I did the chemi clean. I did the cipro. I did everything. You know, I tried, yeah. but once they start going, they're they're going. Yeah. I did notice though, um, with the not the cipro, the chemi clean. And my display system, I have a big rainbow splice. Yeah. And it had this weird little, like, bacteria. I, I think it's called band disease, where you see, like, the bottom edge is kind of receding. And there's, like, a little band. Mm -hmm. It forms, like, lines. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Yeah, I think I've seen, like, white band in uh, uh, chalices before, but uh, not in acros. Well, I got it. It was happening on the bottom of this colony. I never yeah. knew what it was, but I knew it had to be something because... It was too perfect. Mm -hmm. Like the lines that form, it was like uh, a little yeah. maybe eighth of an inch, and then it was a line. Yeah. But when I did the chemi clean, it actually killed that, mm -hmm. and it stopped that problem completely. Okay. Yeah. And it started it grew down again, like it completely covered it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so it does uh, help. Yeah. Uh, Cipro. I mean, I'll talk to you about your protocol. Um, yeah. I mean, again, I mean, I'm still going to be a little bit careful before i do something in a whole system i think maybe uh with these corals that are affected by this this browning thing um i might just set up like a separate um you know qt and do them like as a as a spot treatment with cipro and see if that helps you could dip it you could dip it yeah. in a, like a like yeah. I've done it yeah. As well. yeah 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 one of the shops uh that does a lot of the importing uh near me they uh they bathe all of their freshly imported euphelia and lps in uh in cipro it all goes in yeah. Cipro for about 45 yeah, so to half an hour. The guys here do it as well. Yeah. Um, Rubio's Corals. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of him. I don't think so. He's a wholesaler down here. Yeah. 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 
he also does that. He uses a Cipro or ChemiClean to clean the corals when they come in. Yeah. Yeah. But I just don't understand how that happens. Like, have you noticed anything, any reason for that to happen on your corals or no? What's this? The Have you noticed any reason for them to turn black? Like any, any uh, changes? No, it seems to be something that just kind of cycles, like just like everything in our tanks. I mean, I think there's just this constant, like, you know, like curve of like things changing. Um, <laughs> and for whatever reason, like they just don't. They don't, those corals don't like that, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, I don't, you know. I don't understand because I've been trying to figure out, it's not phosphate either, right? No, I don't think so. I, was I mean, his tank, maybe it was phosphate. Yeah, like my okay. phosphate's been, uh, if I, like I say, if I don't dose uh, a phosphate additive, like my phosphate will drop to zero pretty fast. So, yeah, um, yeah whatever phosphate's going in is getting used pretty fast. And I, I try to maintain a level like that where I get a reading that's not just like point. 0.01 or 0.02 like I kind of want about a 0.05 kind of to 0.07 kind of reading like something that's like substantial enough to be like okay even if the tester even if the hand is a little off like I don't think it would have detected that much if it was zero like it's probably yeah. it's, it's something there's Me something too. There. I do the same thing yeah yeah, yeah. I mean so. I've been trying to I've been racking my brain with that problem that you you asked for like a month or two now or maybe more because he's had that issue for a little while mm -hmm. and i mean it's a beautiful tank it's a it's a nine foot tank so i'm like yeah big i don't know i can't yeah. figure out what it is like it's so weird and he doesn't he doesn't even feed a lot of things so it can't it's not like you know you could blame it on a product he only uses uh acro power he has a calcium reactor he does calc washer mm -hmm. i mean i'm starting to wonder if it has something to do with the calc yeah i mean i guess it depends on what calc he's using too because it could be uh, something in there but uh is he doing uh icps regularly or has he done one since the corals have he, he did one i mean everything was fine yeah because he's using the same thing as i do he does the tropic marin traces and uh it's just real basic he has easy sps the, yeah i told you that gel yeah he has the aqua power and then the trace elements that's it yeah that's it Another, he yeah feeds a fish uh one consideration could be high iodine can make corals brown out and i i my iodine was a little bit high on the last two icps but honestly like just only oh, slightly above i'm trying to think of what the numbers are but it does is it usually like 0.8 to to it's like 0. 0.06, I think it is. 0. 0.06, 0. 0. 0.06 to 0. 0.08 or something like that. Mine was like yeah. 1.1 or 1. 1.2. It wasn't like it's wildly not, high. That's not a big deal. That's no. not a big deal. Um, but yeah, I definitely have heard from a couple people that uh, that high high iodine can brown out SPS. Um, no, no, that's not that. Yeah. If you go too yeah. high with iodine, they'll just peel. I've done, yeah. it. I've done it before. <laughs> They'll just peel. Yeah, that's what'll happen. Yeah, they just it's instant, instant RT. Like you'll yeah. just look at them and you'll be like, "Oh man, the core looks amazing." Then the next day, the skin will just be floating away into yeah. the water. Yeah, that's probably one of the hardest things to face in this hobby is like when something like looks its absolute best and it's just like, "Oh, what?" You just look that's at it. You look at it one day you. and you just get that little bit of dread, that little little. Uh. <laughs> like, yeah, because like, you know it's gonna really? die the next day. Yeah, are you? You're like, "Oh no, no, it looks me? too good." Yeah. Yeah, no, that's happened to me uh, more times than I'd like to <laughs> admit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we do we do everything very similar. <laughs> yeah, we do. Totally. Even down to the, like, the, the business. Everything is really pretty. Yeah, man. This is the recipe, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think there's something to this one man kind of show thing is that like, or, you know, small scale is like, we can really pay attention to every aspect of our system and, and mm -hmm. like, we're, we're in complete control of it. Like, I mean, imagine having employees and, and like, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. like, I don't know, like how many I would, people I would be able to, like, I'd be micromanaging them all. I'd yeah. Like, do that right. It would how be, much did you put be... in? Are you sure you put in that much? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I've, I heard about, uh, one of our wholesalers in Canada had an employee, like miscalculate on a potassium dose and it was like he, he crashed the entire sps system and this is like this is a raceway of sps we're not just talking like yeah. a system we're talking like you know so yeah that's uh that's like kind of what makes i think uh the this more specialized boutique kind of coral guys like us uh yeah. kind of have our our place and you know that's success there's, yeah there's other places you can buy corals that are you know might be cheaper or 
might be more like chop shop type SPS, but like, you know, if you want yeah. aquaculture, you know, grown. I mean, do you want something, you know, do you want something healthy that's been grown out multiple times in a system or you want to, you know, roll the dice and try to get something from the ocean and see if it makes it. Or yeah. Not? Yeah. And also just there's, you can get something that, you know, is going to look the way it's supposed to, you know, it looks when you yeah, get you it. You know what it's going to look like yeah. in the end. Yeah. I mean, it's part of the fun of getting mariculture stuff, too, because, I mean, I'm sure, you know, like Millie's always come in with that super metallic kind of iridescent kind of thing. To yeah, them. they look they like never, holograms. They never, they look so cool, but they yeah. never stay that way. They look uh, like holograms when yeah. they come in. They have, like, all these crazy colors, and the funny part is yeah. that they're actually dying when they look like that. Yeah. When you see all the, you know, the green, the little hint of green and neon mm -hmm. pink and the neon orange, and you're like, oh, it looks amazing, and it's actually because it's kind of hurt. Yeah. Yeah, some of the zozenthali is kind of ejected or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, uh, be, being in those uh, packing facilities in Bali, like they're, uh, they have employees that just like take the corals out and scrub the algae off the bases constantly. So like, you know, what you get as a product is it has been scrubbed and cleaned. And sometimes the the tissue that's encrusted is kind of damaged when it comes in too. So that's one of the reasons yeah, I think that we lose, we lose some of them when they come in because they're damaged around the base. But uh, I mean, I used yeah. to chop them up. I'm not going to lie to you. When I used to get them, even now, like I've tried a couple of those. Um, uh, what are they called? The speciosis? Yeah. I, I tried them. Uh, I had one like four years ago and it grew out and it died and I got kind of annoyed and I was like, ah, it was when I had my potassium issue. Yeah. And I kind of let it go and then I tried it again and my buddy had got them and we just chopped it up. And I, I think that's the best way to do the mariculture is like you have to just chop them up when you yeah. get them. Just break them down to little frags, put them in different spots, and leave the base if you want. Usually, mm -hmm. I throw the base away, but yeah, and then yeah. just try to see what survives because they're so finicky. Yeah, I agree because in my experience too, the the types that come in with the green skeleton issue, um, the if yeah. you frag or, high yeah. enough away from it, or if you say grow it out for a while and you have new growth that you pull off, like usually that new mm -hmm. growth that I've cut from the like outer tips is fine, and then the colony will be peeling. The larger colony yeah. will be peeling. So the colony will have the green boring. Mm -hmm. I still have that on some of my colonies and corals and stuff because it spreads. Yeah. But yeah, I think you it said does. over time, what I try to do is I just try to cut, you know, like if a colony has it, I'll just try to cut a healthy part out yeah. and start it over yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, that's the thing. The smart thing to do is to have uh, redundancy. You know, if you can like have a piece of everything you've got in two systems, then you'll always have mm -hmm. it, you know. Yeah. yeah, that's what I try to do as well. Yeah. Even if it's just a frag. Yeah. Just keep a frag somewhere else. Yeah, totally. I've been doing that with my Zoas, especially because they are just one of the worst things for out of the blue melting. Mm hmm. So well, I got though, rid of Zoas. Yeah, honestly. I gave up on Zoas a long time I, ago. I hate dealing with them, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably don't have, you don't have as many vendors over there, but over here, man, for Zoas. Yeah. There is tons of people like, there's not even it's not even worth dealing with it. Yeah. Know? Yeah. No, that like, makes there's, sense. There's people sure. that have their whole house is just Zoas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, less people so are doing Zoas in Canada. It's not even worth here. dealing with it anymore. Yeah. For sure. Uh, okay. This is kind of, I got a little fun section I want to do with you here. Like we can do as a kind of a last thing. So this is a r rapid fire best, best questions. Uh, so you like, you can answer like non conventionally if you want, like you can say something like, I'm just going to leave it broad. So, uh, All so right. let's, okay. So, so best fish. Oh, best fish. You can pick one fish. Uh, I like the, my favorite fish is the, oh, what is his name? The white tail tang. The what's that? White tail tang. Yeah. The white tail. Good, good algae eater. No, he's just my favorite in terms of looks. Okay, nice. Okay, uh, my uh, best SPS. Mm, man, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Go with your gut. Uh, I mean, I like everything I keep, but uh, I'd say probably one of the nicest is the Tangerine Dream. Okay, I know that one. That, yeah, that piece uh, is orange, and I like I like orange because it it's a hard color to come by on the you know on the, in corals. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, okay, best S or LPS. LPS, the Holy Grail. Holy the Grail. Holy Grail Torch. Holy Grail Torch. Okay, favorite softy. Yeah. Softy, I would say a toadstool. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Okay. The neon I like green. That. 
Yeah. The neon green toadstool. Yeah. No, I like that choice. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, favorite lighting source, if you were just using one lighting source. I'll do LEDs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, favorite product line, if you just use, say, one product line for your whole system. If I had to use one product line only, damn, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd probably do, um, I don't even know, probably two little fishies because they have everything. You know, yeah. They have a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call. I could uh, probably get away with using it. Uh, I mean, we already talked about salt, but favorite salt, if you've ever noticed the anything. To be... Yeah, okay, nice. Yeah. Uh, best aquarium controller. I mean, the best of what we have is Apex. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd probably agree on that. Uh, best wave pump, so Gyre, MP40. What's been the best for you I'm over the years? I, I like Gyres, but they require some cleaning. Mm -hmm. And I got the new ones now. Have you seen the new ones that you can... Uh, yeah. The change, directional change ones? The direction, yeah. That one doesn't seem to get as dirty as the old one for some reason. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I've had it running on that new system for a while. I haven't touched them. I haven't cleaned them, and they're running great. But still, I would go with uh, Reef Octos and a Hydros. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Those you the don't have to touch. Hydros is sweet with those for sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Most hated pest. <laughs> uh, What's probably the worst? Those, those white bugs. Yeah. Okay. The white bugs. Uh, okay. Here's the final question. So, if if you were in a financial position to do so, would you Polo Reef? Would you do a Polo Reef situation? Uh, <laughs> fourteen thousand. I don't gallons. know because I mean <laughs> that's a lot of work. I mean, but you got money to pay people to do it. Good people well, too. We're talking it, like yeah, probably talking like but somebody I, I could hire you. Go that big. <laughs> I think that's huge. Yeah, you know, I think that's huge. It's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. But yeah, that thing is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Okay, like having SeaWorld in your home. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Yeah, I'll definitely All be right. in touch. Okay, All right, you too, bro. Okay, Take later. it easy. Thank you, man. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Beyond the Reef, featuring Ray from Pirates Reef Corals. Again, if you want to check out his website, go to piratesreefcorals.com. And if you have any suggestions for future guests, uh, want to just ask us a question, make a suggestion, make a criticism, whatever you want to say, uh, feel free to reach out at beyondthereefpod at gmail.com. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope to hear from you soon.